Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures, and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Kate Land says, gender difference, not gender equality, is the secret source of success. Kate, thanks for being with us today. A real pleasure. Thank you. Hey, you've written a book, All the Brains in the Business, and I told you before the show, as soon as I saw that title, I said, I've got to have this person on. I want to know more about this because, obviously, the smarter we are, if you can start using our brain better, we're going to do better. And if I read your book correctly, was there a section in there that said something like, we're wasting 30% of our brain power? Yes, absolutely. This is what I'm, I'm helping my clients look at is understand where they've got pockets of latent brain power that they're not fully accessing because companies spend an awful lot of time and an awful lot of money recruiting bright, smart, capable people. So when you get those people into your business, you want to make sure that you're absolutely getting the maximum out of their brains. And Understanding the underpinning neuroscience is really important to be able to to do that. And and there's a lot of latent brain power that's going unused. So this is like having 30% of our money in checks that we just never cashed. It's sitting there, it's sitting in somebody's desk. So we love you. You're going to tell us some exciting things. (laughs) Now, in your book, I read that our emotional response is three times faster than our rational response. What does that mean to us? It's it's nice neuroscience words, but how does that help us? Yeah, no, really, really important for business leaders uh, to, to, to understand this. So the brain evolved in three phases. The first part of the brain we inherited from our reptile ancestors, and that just looks after all the auto, autonomic or automatic stuff that goes on in our bodies. So that's just on all the time. The limbic system, the emotional brain, was the second part of the brain to evolve. That came on along when the first mammals came on stream and giving birth to live young. And there had to be a relationship between the young and the parents for the babies to survive. So that part of the brain is, looks after emotion and um, responds very, very quickly to the information coming in to tell you whether you're safe or not safe. And it has an emotional response to that. That happens inside 85 milliseconds. Then the last part of the brain to evolve is the prefrontal cortex. Now, that's the bit that does the really clever stuff and clever thinking and that business people need to have functioning for as much of the day as possible. The uh, cortex, the rational brain, starts thinking and making sense of what we've already experienced at 250 milliseconds. So three times more slowly than we've already had an emotional response. So we are emotional way before we're rational. And it's really important to understand that because as a leader, you want to create the right kind of emotional context for people to express themselves into so that they can, their emotional brain can kind of settle down and their prefrontal cortex, the kind of CEO of the brain can really do its clever stuff. Now, if, if I'm right, and this is what the way I thought of that, Uh, For instance, if I see a beautiful, uh, fancy sports car, and I'm the younger male in this picture, I see that, I say, oh, if I have that car, I'm cool, I'm a leader, people are going to think I'm successful, and all the young ladies will be hanging around me. I don't see the price tag of $100,000, I see the emotion that's leading me to go for that car. Is that kind of the way it affects businesses? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So your emotional response will either be pulling you towards something like the wonderful sports car, or it will be telling you to retreat from something that feels dangerous to you. The brain, this is massively oversimplifying, obviously, but important to know. The brain has two dominant modes. One is the survive mode when it's trying to protect you. And when we're in survive mode, our cortex, the clever part, is not fully switched on. When we're in thrive mode and the defense mechanisms have been told you, they can stand down, then we can, then we can think well and get excited and our brains produce dopamine. And so when you spot that sports car, that would produce a reward hit, dopamine, you'd have an emotional response towards the car and you would want to work hard and go get it. I, I love that saying too. And I'm just going to ask you to go back for us. Survive and thrive mode. I don't yes. know if you have caps or T-shirts or pens, but 
I think that's a great slogan. So we want to be in thrive mode. Is Absolutely. that right? Totally. So the neurochemistry, so what the, the, the emotional brain will hijack the, the rational brain if it thinks you're in enough threat and danger. That is survive. And basically, you cannot think well when you're in survive. And so for business leaders, you do not want your people in survive. You want them in thrive as much of the day as possible, because that's when they're going to feel good, do good thinking, come up with creative thoughts, get stuff done. So they, their execution will be far better. Uh, and that's why it's important to understand all the brains in the business because you, 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 different, different strokes for different folks. So we, we need um, work cultures that enable the best of all the brains, not just a particular subset of brains. Uh, I, lo- I, I love that as the next subtitle for your next book, that you want to thrive, not just survive or a T-shirt. Yeah. I think that that's perfect. Now, what does it really take to get the brain working optimally in the workplace? We all want that excellent college graduate, someone with a wonderful background. We're willing to pay hundreds of thousands. And when I say we build businesses, millions of dollars. But you can get us some hidden assets that we don't even know is there. So what does it take to get that optimal brain performance? Yeah, it, it really takes un- understanding. This is why I wrote the book, because I, I, I came across uh, – during the last financial crisis, actually, in 2008, too many people whose brains were in survive and not thrive. And I, I sat there and I figured, why would you pay good brains that much money? And then it's like driving the car with the handbrake on, you know, then stress them so that they can't think well. And that's, as I got into the research, I discovered that if you're really serious about creating the optimal conditions for brains to do their best, you have to understand about brain sex difference. So if you're, it's all about understanding enough about the differences between male and female brains, because there are some important neurobiological differences. Then it's about understanding the individual brain and knowing what that brain needs to be in Thrive and, and really working hard to create work practices and work cultures that, that enable the, the brains to be in, in Thrive and not survive. And that's what you're going to help us with today. And by the way, for our audience... I believe both you and your partner, Paul Brown, are into the neuroscience field. You guys know this stuff, so we can trust you. And in fact, you tell me before the show, you have a company, MindBridge, correct? Correct, yes. Which I love that name, but I mean, it's it's exactly what you're talking about. And if we want to look to the experts, we're certainly talking to to the perfect one right here. Now, you talk about gender differences, but as I kidded you before, Weren't most businesses going back years? It used to be just men. I mean, we didn't even think of the businesswoman. So didn't men kind of set the rules and say, you know, this we're going to work with our brain because we're the men, we're the big shots? Yes, basically. A lot of big business cultures are better suited for a more a brain that's at the more male end of the brain sex spectrum because originally, as you say, they were created by men for men. And the the... There are some wonderful diversity and inclusion efforts that are happening across the world. And um, sometimes what I find is they're missing a trick because actually what happens a lot of the time is that the, the ways of working, what goes on day, day to day, suits a, a particular type of male brain better than others because historically that's how these companies have grown up. And what you end up doing is missing out on a whole bunch of female brains and a whole bunch of male brains where those men might have a more, a more feminine brain. Um, and that's why I cre- I've created the book and I'm doing the research. It's what are the work practices, and there are some simple models for communication and coaching and running meetings that enable business leaders to create environments where you can get the best of all the brains, no matter what sex they are, where they are on the brain sex spectrum. Um, and everybody wins. And that's exactly what we want. Kate, uh, at this point, we'd just like to let our audience know that you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHBC. I'm your host, Bill Horan. Our guest today is Kate Lanz, L-A-N-Z. She is the author of the book, All the Brains in the Business. And Kate, two questions we always have for our guests. Where can we get the book? And is there a website where we can learn more? Sure thing. Yeah, the book is available on Amazon. So if you just 
pop uh, all the brains in the business into the, into the Amazon search function, you'll find it. Um, and it's easy to buy either, either in hard copy or, or um, soft copy, virtual. And the website, my website is www.mindbridge.co.uk. And you can also contact me on LinkedIn. It's, as, as you say, Bill, it's Kate Lanz, L-A-N-Z. And I'm really keen to have a big conversation with as many people as possible about how to get the best of all the brains. So I'm, I'm yeah. I would talk. think you would be the most interesting person. I don't care about people on TV. I want to talk to you for that extra 30% because if we can get that increase, even a portion of it, I, I think you've tapped into something great. And as I said to you, I love that, the title of your book, All the Brains in the Business. Now, you talk about knowing how to access brain gender differences as a source of competitive advantage. Does it take someone like you? Do we have to bring in an expert, a neuroscientist, someone from MindBridge? Is it something that the average dental office can use as well as the 100-person company or the 10,000-person company? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody can can access the best of all the brains. And it takes, I think, three things. One is the, the commitment to do, to do it. So recognize that, that it's an important thing and, and it's good for people's well-being, which is good for their productivity. So really saying, yep, I'm going to do, I'm going to do that. Secondly, it's educating yourself enough. And this is what I've tried to do with the book is you do not need to be a neuroscientist. You don't need to be a neuropsychologist. Um, ed, but educate yourself and reading the book is, would be enough actually. Um, and then thirdly, to just to use some very simple work practices, like uh, there's a model called the Rich Model for Communication, and there's another model called the Four Cs for running meetings. And basically the idea is to mirror the way the brain works, which is bottom up. The emotional brain comes in first, the rational brain comes in second. And so if you run your meetings, have your coaching and performance conversations in, in a way that is genuinely brain-friendly, you massively up your chances of, of, of accessing all the brains in the business, including the 30% that are kind of driving with the handbrake on at the moment. <laughs> okay, I, I want to tell our audience too, just as you said, one, your book is very readable. It, you don't have to be, if I can read it, anybody can read it out there. And it's also short and to the point. I think it's 125 pages, maybe even a little less than that. So it's not going to push anybody to the limit. And for a business person, if you can increase profits by two or 3%, and you're telling us just by using these gender differences and being aware of them, we can increase by 30%. I want to know what's in that book. Now, is it as easy as saying, okay, men over here, women over there? Because I read something scary in your book. Just when I thought I was getting this game, uh, I read that the sex of the brain may not be the same as the sex of the body. It, it's kind of like the clinker you put in at a mystery show at the end. So you tune in the next night. Explain that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so there are, there are fundamental neurobiological differences between male and female brains. Those differences occur on a spectrum. So it, it absolutely is not binary. It's not like all men's brains are like this and all women's brains are like that at all. So, so the underpinning is neurobiological differences. Then on top of that, you've got your personal experiences. So it is a combination of nature and nurture and those two things blend together over the course of a lifetime to give you the sex of your brain and the sex of your brain you know our brain patterning is as unique to us as our fingerprints um, and so it's a question of really getting to know your own brain and the brain of your team um, that said there are on average, differences between male and female brains. But it is not a stereotypical binary equation at all. So, for example, I have two sons, two young, lo lovely young men, young, and one of them has a very male brain. So his brain is a two out of 20, where one is extremely male, 20 is extremely female. And my other son, his brain sex score is 12 out of 20, which is the same as mine. And, you know, um, as I read your book, I have to say to you, I've thought many of my characteristics match more with the female brain. Right. And I guess a lot of males don't want to say that, but I don't see that as a bad thing because if I can make 30% more, I don't care what you call yeah. me. I, yeah. want I want my company making that extra 30%. Yeah. 
yeah. well be happy. And I'm sure everybody fits into those different molds. But that does, yeah. that statement does take you back a little bit. Now, just between you and me, and I won't tell our audience, who's smarter, <laughs> the men or the women? Oh, both. both. This, and this is my point, is, is it is not about, it's about the differences. So the way that women um, will go about things to solve the same, exactly the same problem will, will tend to be quite different from the way men do it. We both end up in the same location, um, but with the, the route that we get there is different. And then what you get is real diversity of thinking. And in fact, this is a really cool, cool stat here. You'll like this, Bill. Um, some of the research out of the States, actually, from MIT and Carnegie Mellon, demonstrate that teams that are made up of 50-50 gender balance, men and women, are smarter than the individual IQs of all the people in that team. So if you've got a genuinely gender balanced team, that you, you, it makes all the people in the team smarter. I love that. And you, you're right. And as you're talking, I, I'm thinking of almost a recipe that if you have a cake recipe, if you put in more sugar, it doesn't make the cake better. It just makes it sweeter. If you put in more flour, exactly. but the right balance seems yeah. to be everything. Yeah. And I don't know if that's a good analogy, but that's the way I'm seeing this and you know what's coming through. When you look at a business- I love that. Thank you. Mark that down. You can use that in the <laughs> next talk. Um, let me ask you, when you go into a company and talk about this, and obviously they hire your company to do this, your neuroscientists, what's the reaction? How do, and is it different from the women on the team to the, you know, the old boss who takes out a cigar and says, I don't know about this. What kind of reactions do you get? I'm fascinated by that. Yeah, no, well, I, do, I do a lot of workshops and, and go and have lots of conversations with, with all sorts of people. And very often it's mostly men in the room and a, a small percentage of women. And the reaction, everybody's interested. I haven't had anybody ever who isn't fascinated in the underpinning of science um, because it just starts to explain so many things. And I've even been called into situations where there have been some you know, quite difficult goings on in, in, in organizations um, with a kind of macho culture. And even in those environments, people are interested. They're interested. And um, it just explains a lot of some of the missing communication that, that goes on in the workplace um, as, from an underpinning biological point of view. As an observer from the outside, and, and we're saying this general, so you're not damning any one company or sports team or anything, and just as you watch the news, et cetera, would you say that we need, and I'm not saying men or women, I'm saying the female or male brain in the world today, do we need more female brain orientation or more male? Are we too competitive or not competitive enough? Right. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, it's such a topical question, Bill. And, I, you know, one I'm thinking and writing a lot about at the moment, we, we, we need the best of both. And um, what we're, we're not seeing that, in, in enough countries at a political level. Um, and a lot of the decision-making, I, I think, is in some countries, including my own, is being made by too many of the same kind of male brain. So, I, you know, I, I think recently the British government has been making decisions that had they had as many female brains in the decision-making for it, they, they would have made better decisions and not then had to turn around and backtrack. Um, so it's all about getting the best of both. And at the moment, and you, there's, there's, there, there is, it's top heavy male dominated in too many countries. And we've seen that some of the countries run by women are, are doing rather better with the pandemic at the moment. And I don't think that's a coincidence. And it's funny, I felt the same way, but I just wanted to see your feeling because of uh, maybe where you get too competitive at some point, and that's more or less looked on as a good thing. Let's compete and let's argue about it. But in the end, would we as a society be better if we had, yeah. and again, it doesn't mean they're a female doing it, but it's a person who has those female qualities in the brain. Absolutely. Kate, before we go further, once again, I want our audience to know that you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHBC. I'm Bill Horan. Our guest today is Kate Lanz, L-A-N-Z. Her book is All the Brains in the Business. And I want to repeat that, All the Brains in the Business. If you're interested in brains and you want a smart business, you want to hear what Kate has to say. Kate, tell us the website and where we can get the book. 
Sure thing. So the book is available on Amazon. So if you just pop into the Amazon search, um, all the brains in the business, you will find it and you can get it in either hard copy or um, e e version. And the website is www.mindbridge.co.uk. And link in with me as well if you're interested. I'm I'm keen to have conversations with people about what they think and uh, make make this a a big hot topic. It, it's so important. So it's all about all about the conversation. And as you said, if a business, especially if a business isn't doing well, first of all, I, I look at it and say, what have you got to lose? And amazingly, if a business can turn itself around or pick up, you say 30%, but even a 10%, 20% increase, that's enormous in today's world. And Absolutely. what do they say? Hey, I read Kate's book. It cost me a few dollars. And instead of tens of thousands of dollars, I'm now the leader of the pack. And by the way, does this also work? Again, we think of big businesses, but how about the 10-person accounting firm, the architectural firm, the plumbing company? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 just, it just works because, it, and the company size is actually irrelevant um, because if a brain feels welcome, feels seen, feels heard, feels understood, it will be in Thrive and not survive. And a brain in Thrive is far more creative, far more innovative, and far more agile in terms of execution and getting stuff done. So it, 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 the company size doesn't matter at all. It's just about being really committed to, to being brain friendly for all the brains. Now, a male and female brain, I read that there's a difference in what they pay attention to. Can you give us an example of that and what that means? Yeah, for sure. So this is a very interesting research which, which shows the neural patterning. So the way the brain actually fires is very different between male brains and female brains. So the male brain tends, the brain is, is connecting from front to back inside each hemisphere. In the female brain, the dominant connectivity is between hemispheres. So um, what, what does that mean in practice? It means that from men's brains are more likely more of the time to go from perception, information in, to coordinated action. Women's brains are far more likely because they're taking in a broader context and across both hemispheres um, to go from information in to a more emergent, intuitive type of action. And so you end up with, putting it very simply, a kind of men's brains, you, you might get more of an either or solution to a problem. For the female brain, you, you, you might get a both and so it's the female brain is holding more possibilities in mind. Um, and, and Paul, my, my co-author, the way he would describe that is he would say, um, men solve problems, women create solutions. <laughs> I thought you were going to say women create the problems, men solve them. Now... Do women notice emotions better and expressions if we're sitting at a meeting and as you said, I might be black and white being the male for this session. If you're sitting there with me, would you be the one to say, you know, I noticed somebody was blinking a few times or their face changed and pick up yes. on that emotion? Is that one of those general characteristics? Yeah, that is that that is one of those general characteristics. It's women's brains, um, the, the empathy centers are bigger and and uh, more active than in males brains on average women have women's eyes notice micro expressions in the face more than than do do men's um and women have uh more of a a, a gut uh, reaction to um emotions in the room so typically speaking women are more likely and again it's always a function of nature and nurture you can, it's not a binary thing at all but women are, are programmed by nature um, and very often by nurture to, to, to be more empathic and tuned in in that regard. And, and I read something amazing in your book, just uh, the fact that you throughout, even with baby boys and girls, they can test these things at a very young age. Yeah. And they actually see these reactions, either yeah. from the eyes or the facial expressions, which is amazing to me. But again, with all the medical things they have and as a neuroscientist, I'm sure you know this better than anybody. Are there any myths about this that when you come in and you say this, you get somebody who stands up and goes, well, you know, then we should have 50% men, 50% women or something. Are there myths that take people down the wrong road? I think a lot of people want to argue that it's just 
we've been programmed by society to be a particular way. And that's why it's interesting to look at some of the research that looks at very tiny babies who, who can't possibly have been socialized yet. Um, and I think, you know, in, 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 in a perfect world, I think we genuinely would have proper gender balance across, across organizations, across political structures, and you'd get a much greater diversity of, of, of thought. Um, so, and, and my argument really is about brain diversity in, in all its glory. Um, and, and gender is, is, is a key thing that, that we have inherited from, from nature. Now, what would you advise a business? Suppose I brought you into a small accounting firm. And I said, we, you know, we're very impressed by your book, All the Brains in the Business. Um, how should we use this going forward? I mean, uh, let's say we have eight men and two women, just to make it a simple start. What would you tell us that could help us? Would you tell us to fire two of the men and get two more women or what would go on? Yeah, no, not at all. Uh, no, what I, what I would do is, is uh, run, run an, an information workshop with you so that you kind of got to know the key facts about brain sex difference. We then measure the sex of each of the brains in the team so everybody could see where, where, who else was, was in the team and were they very, do they have a very male brain, a mixed brain or a more female brain? And then talk to them, about, uh, the team, about how you could leverage each other's brain differences better and deploy some of the models that I've been testing in my, in my research. Um, and so for me, a real highlight was um, I was working in a financial services company and one of the male MDs sent an email after the workshop to a female colleague of his. And he said, do you know what? I owe you an apology because I always thought you were a bit kind of kooky and coming at things from a strange angle. And I just was discounting you a lot. And he said, now I understand about the brain sex difference. I can see that you're simply coming at, at the situation from a different point of view than me because you have a female brain and I have a, a, quite a male brain. And I, I'm sorry about that. And I'm going to canvas your opinion actively because I think the two of us, have, you know, we'll have some interesting thoughts. That is the perfect ending story. because, And I give that guy a lot of credit, too, because he could have just sat back right. and said, boo hoo. But he came out yeah. and is willing to say it and express himself. Yeah. Kate, before we wrap up, once again, I'd like you to give our audience the key information. The book is All the Brains in the Business. Once again, tell us that website. You bet. So the, my website is www.mindbridge dot co dot uk my name is kate lanz l-a-n-z you can find me on linkedin and please do link in and you can buy the book all the brains in the business on amazon and it's only good if you want to increase business by 30 percent. if you don't want that increase and people to get along and do better business eh, read a comic book right that's what we can do <laughs> no thank you very much you've been very informative and to your co-author paul brown thank you so much very interesting show and we'll all look for the company mindbridge Kate would like our audience to know that you've been listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHBC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, asking you to please join us again next week. At the same time, we will continue our journey to success.